the fundamental right of the people. Now, are we going to allow the market, especially the market reforms that we have seen prevail in the world today? And the kind of, uh, we are saying that this is now a new asset class and hot money is going to chase it. We have recently burnt with microfinance. What assurance do we have, Amkanji, uh, you were talking about? What assurance do citizens have that if social entrepreneurs step into this place, exactly the same thing will not happen again? And we will have to pay 100 rupees per litre for our basic 20 uh, litres of drinking water without which people cannot live in a poor country. Where are we heading? There are some places where the market must not go. What are the opinions of the panel on this side? Um, well, I was like um, Shavag when he started playing cricket, you know, he made a comment that, you know, he grew up watching Tendulkar on TV and it was a great honor to just stand at the other end of the pitch and watch him in action. So like that, I have been watching uh, Madam Thoret <laughs> holding the fort and I have just been enjoying just the proximity of sitting and uh, listening to her from very close quarters. And uh, now, like uh, Shavag, I have also got a chance. <laughs> <laughs> See, when you take uh, things like uh, basic things like water, health, education and financial services, the government is going to be very much there. The government just can't be wished away because you are dealing with the masses and the masses represent the vote banks in the country and every politician is going to be behind that vote bank without doubt. So if any of us think that, you know, we, we can do a even an NGO, it doesn't matter that it has to be a for-profit. Even if you are doing an NGO activity, but if, if, you, if the politician thinks that you are influencing, if your influence over a segment of that population is going beyond what he is comfortable with, he is going to come and hit you on your head. So it doesn't matter that you are a for-profit or a not-for-profit because their purpose is completely different in life. So we have to deal with the politicians and the government whenever you want to deal with the masses. It doesn't matter which service you are talking about. Uh, so, from an uh, uh, entrepreneur side, I think we have to just be sensitive about this, which means that everything you do has to be absolutely fair, completely above board, totally transparent and we also take that extra effort of communicating this constantly to everybody, including the governments, including the press, the public. We have to take that extra step, you know, you can be, a, you can be running State Bank of India, it's a government-owned bank, but you do not go around and explain why you are making profits or how little you are actually making while you are giving. You don't have to do that. But if you are running a private sector social entrepreneur, you have to take that extra effort. There is no going around it and as entrepreneurs, I think we have to realize that that that's a part of our job and we just have to do it and if you don't like it, then don't do this. You go and uh, service the mid-market and upper market, nobody is going to ask you questions. The, what the government can do to the, the sector on the developmental side or the social side is that one is that uh, I think there is a clear understanding they can't actually deliver. I think that's understood, whether accepted is a different issue, but clearly understood. Um, and if they want to really be sensitive to that and want to support it, the best thing is one hands off, just stay off. But if they stay off, what excesses has happened recently in microfinance and always it's happened in India in different sectors will continue to happen. They have to stay off but not actually take their hands off. They have to put their own market intelligence units in place. They have to be constantly observing and watching whether it's a government aided project or even a non-government uh, 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 project, it doesn't matter. They have to have their market intelligence out on the field all the time. And uh, pardon me, even the regulators, because quite often the government's job is actually given to the regulators for some specific areas. The regulators and the government, they have to put market units, market intelligence units out on the field. They have to constantly be knowing and seeing what's happening. And at uh, every appropriate stage, if they are able to bring about the right set of regulations and controls and uh, mechanisms, monitoring mechanisms in place, probably they are actually helping create a very sustainable private sector uh, uh, you know, development which can actually help the society at large. But if they don't put those mechanisms... Why do you have more faith in the state as a regulator versus state as a deliverer? It's the same state. Why is it more efficient in this state if they have to do this, they have to do that? But you're saying they can't deliver a basic service. No, see, one is that delivering the basic service is a different set of, um, you know, requirement. But just monitoring is a different set of requirement. If the governments and regulators can't, can't even monitor, then I don't think there's any hope. We will always have scams, no doubt. 
if they can't deliver the minimum they should do is monitor and monitor throughout not not when it has grown to a level where it's become an eyesore or a problem but monitor throughout i think that's a must if they can't do that also then i think we will continue to have scams so i i believe that the best option going forward is if the governments and regulators can actually put market intelligence units in place and keep monitoring and keep taking corrective regulatory actions at every appropriate stage of development probably that's the best model to look at now when we talk about public goods the, the whole point of a public good is that they're non excludable and non rival right neither health nor education is actually either non excludable nor is it non rival however there are problems in delivering these mechanisms to people who can't afford them there is also a problem of what is the standard of education the standard of healthcare so i think it's important to understand or to try and understand where the ro the role of the state is as a regulator and where it needs to step in as a service provider and does it really need to step in as a service provider as, at all running out of time and it's, and there are lot many hands so if i actually exceed one then there are many more which will come up so 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 we have to stop now uh, it's been it's been a fairly insightful session for me personally and uh, the fact that there is so much of participation has been very useful for all of us maybe we are all going to go back far more knowledgeable but the fact is the state is going to be here and social entrepreneurs hopefully will remain here for longer time to deal with the state uh, i think there is a learning for both sides and we need to find a way to coexist at sankalp i think this is the end of sankalp maybe a prayta is the right person to tell us whether it's, it is actually the end of sankalp or we have something more to talk about but but thank you all for coming here and this panel ends here thank you vinith uh, may i request you to please hand over a small memento to all our panelists